can breathe. You can blink. You can cry. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 shocking Walking Dead deaths. Besides, I already made you a promise. For this list, we're looking at the most surprising and unexpected character demises throughout the TV series. We will include multiple people in one entry if their cause of death was the same. Since we'll be looking at all 11 seasons, a spoiler alert is in effect. Which Walking Dead death left you the most stunned? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20, Theodore T. Dog Douglas. This is God's plan. He'll take care of me. Always has. He's gonna help me lead you out of these tombs. A relatively peaceful day at the group's prison was ruined when a bunch of walkers appeared without warning. T Dog didn't hesitate to try to contain the outbreak by closing a fence to trap a group of them. Suddenly, one of the walkers T Dog didn't see snuck up on him and got his shoulder. No, you should I'm stop. You, you should stop. What? Sit here and wait to die. Uh -uh. Since there wasn't a way for him to take care of the wound, we were already prepared to lose one of the group's moral centers. But the show shocked us again by having T Dog sacrifice himself to save Carol's life. No one could have foreseen that a key member of the group would fall on a day that began so beautifully. No! 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 Number 19, Morales. So why are you here, Rick? I know you. Just like before. In season one, we knew Morales is a family man and trusted ally to our main heroes. That's why our jaws dropped when we saw him pull a gun on Rick seven seasons later. During an extremely tense conversation, we learned that Morales went down a dark path after losing his family. However, it seemed like Rick was willing to try to save his old friend's soul. I'd at least try to find another way. Yeah, why? Because we knew each other for a few days back at the start. His good intentions came to a crashing halt when Daryl arrived and took Morales down permanently. We definitely were not expecting to see this ally turned enemy return at all. So seeing Morales die so quickly after his appearance was an unforeseen end to his story. That, that, that was... I know who it was. Don't matter. Not one little bit. Number 18, all but one member of the scavenger group. The scavengers that lived in a junkyard had a nasty habit of betraying people they were supposed to be working with. This garbage-based society got away with it until they crossed the saviors a second time. Take one out. And the rest will fall in line. Just one Simon. Initially, Negan wanted his lieutenant Simon to eliminate just one scavenger to send a message to the entire group. However, the mustachioed savior ends up losing his temper during the mission. We gasped as Simon ordered his people to fire on the entire group. Light it up, gents. Light it up now! When the smoke cleared, only scavenger leader Anne was left standing. It was beyond surprising to see this traitorous group get almost wiped out in the blink of an eye. Got it done. That and then something. You good? Number 17, Andrea. You gonna get us both out of here? And you're gonna be okay. After spending most of season three away from her friends, it looked like the tough and resourceful Andrea was finally going to rejoin Rick's crew but the governor made her journey much harder by restraining her to a chair and leaving her in a room with a man about to turn. Once Andrea finally freed herself, it looked like she would dispatch the new walker in her way and escape. We were stunned when her friends arrived and discovered she'd been bit. I tried to stop them. You're burning up. Since Andrea survived significantly longer in the comics, seeing her perish here was a huge twist. Her demise left us wondering how the story would move forward without such a major character. I tried. You did. Number 16, Spencer Monroe. Instead of trying to stop the vicious Negan with force, Spencer wanted to win over the villain with diplomacy. Oh crap, is that for me? We haven't officially met. I'm Spencer Monroe. The two actually seemed to have a nice day together, drinking and playing a game of pool. Once Spencer saw an opening, he tried to undermine Rick and request to be the new leader. Negan rejected this leadership offer by shockingly stabbing the wannabe politician on the spot. I didn't 
I don't... You know what I'm thinking? Because I have a guess. It's because you got no guts. While we were still reeling from Spencer's end, Rosita tried to remove the bat-wielding villain from the Earth. In the wake of her failed assassination attempt, Negan ordered his follower Arat to take the innocent Olivia's life without warning. Arat, kill somebody. No, it was me! No! Seeing two named characters die in one afternoon showed how truly unpredictable the big bad could be. Number 15, Sadiq. I heard what happened. Don't want to talk about it. Resident Dr. Sadiq was never the same after he was captured by the heinous Whisperer group. The memories of the night continued to haunt him whether he was asleep or awake. Although it seemed like Sadiq was safe from the villainous group in Alexandria, our hearts dropped when he realized his ally Dante was actually a Whisperer spy. While the doctor wasn't the group's most skilled fighter, we still thought he'd be able to beat this wolf in sheep's clothing. But Sadiq couldn't overcome Dante or his demons. The doctor's incredibly depressing end really rocked us because it was hidden in an already unexpected spy reveal. Lo siento, pero you just missed them. Hmm. Puedo ayudarte con algo? Number 14, Lori Grimes. No, baby's coming now. We have to get back to our cell no. block and have personal no, help. We can't risk getting caught out there. You're going to need to give birth to this baby here. If The Walking Dead has taught viewers anything, it's that no character is safe. Lori Grimes brutally reminded us of this fact in one of the show's most pivotal episodes. While trying to stay away from walkers within the prison, the pregnant protagonist went into labor. Unfortunately, it becomes clear that the baby will need to be delivered via C-section that Lori can't recover from. We will survive. My baby has to survive. Please, my baby. For all of us, please. We sat there stunned as we realized we were watching this character's final moments. The fact that Lori also dies in the source material should have prepared us for this demise. However, we and the cast still found ourselves caught off guard by the final decision she made for her daughter. I'm sorry. Number 13, Paul Rovia, a.k.a. Jesus. It's about 130, 140 of them. You ever see him do this before? No. Never. Although the cast of The Walking Dead is huge, Jesus stood out because he was an athletic fighter who could get out of anything. And we knew he'd make it to the end of the series because he's one of the few that survives the entire comic story. So we were not even slightly worried when Jesus faced a bunch of walkers in a dark and smoky graveyard. After skillfully taking out multiple foes, we gasped when his last target dodged his blade and retaliated. You are where you do not belong. We couldn't believe this was the end for the fan favorite character. While this scene served as a memorable intro for a new enemy group, we still have trouble accepting that he fell way before his time. Number 12, Lizzie Samuels. I know what I have to do now. I know. It's ugly, and it's scary, and it does change you. Once we learned of Sophia's fate in season two, it was clear that even young Walking Dead characters were not safe. Yet we still could not have predicted how Lizzie would go. The disturbed survivor left our jaws on the floor when she ensured that her sister Mika would become a walker. I'm sorry I pointed my gun at you. I just needed you to wait. In the wake of this incredibly disturbing scene, Carol and Tyrese realize that Lizzie crossed a line of no return. The adults decide that there's only one way to move forward. Every fan remembers where they were when Carol told Lizzie to... Look at the flowers, Lizzie. <laughs> Just look at the flowers. Thankfully, the show gave us plenty of time to sit and process this absurdly dark turn of events with the characters before moving on to more Walker action. Number 11, Tyrese Williams. Went the way it had to. The way it was always going to. 
Just one episode after the series said goodbye to a major character we will talk about later, Tyrese visited Noah's fallen community. The duo finds themselves looking around a seemingly lifeless home. So neither we nor a very distracted Tyrese saw it coming when Noah's reanimated brother surprised the formidable survivor with a bite. The wounded warrior still appeared to have a chance. I'm not giving up. You hear me? I'm not giving up! Not only did Tyrese fight to stay alive, but we thought his friends acted quickly enough to stop the wound from being fatal. However, the cruel reality of the situation was that it was too late. Having Tyrese's death come an episode after another significant character died made for an unpredictable and tragic twist. It's okay, Tyrese. You gotta know that now. Number 10. Jesse, Sam, and Ron Anderson When the Anderson family's home was overrun with walkers, the trio found a way to successfully camouflage themselves in a horde with Rick, Carl, and Michonne. But the young Sam Anderson gets too nervous and draws too much attention to himself. Come on, Sam. 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 Hey, you can do this. Moments after he's attacked by walkers, his horrified mother Jesse also meets her end. A disturbed Ron attempts to shoot a member of the Grimes family as retaliation. Although Michonne takes the would-be assassin down, Carl gets a permanent facial injury due to a stray gunshot. What really made this scene stand out is that multiple shocking twists happened over the span of around three minutes. Even if you knew their ends were coming, this sequence will still leave you breathless. I thought after living behind these walls for so long that maybe they couldn't learn. Number 9. Dale Horvath and This new world is ugly. It's harsh. It's a, it's a, it's a survival of the fittest. And that's a world I don't want to live in. This turn hurt the viewers almost as much as it did Jeffrey DeMunn's Dale. His demise was set in motion after Carl foolishly motivated a walker to head towards the group farm. Later on, Dale investigates the demise of a cow in a safe zone. Suddenly, the walker Carl goaded earlier executes a terrifying jump scare. Dale tragically receives fatal injuries from the undead foe in the ensuing struggle. T-Dog, get a shotgun now! While his end was unexpected on its own, the fact that actor Jeffrey DeMunn asked to die after behind-the-scenes production shakeups made this scene surprising in real life, too. At the end of the day, fans were left disoriented while trying to process how Carl's negligence and actual events led to Dale's end. <gasps> Sorry, brother. Number 8. Denise Cloyd. I can ID the meds. I know how to use a machete now. I've seen Romers up close. I'm ready. You good with this? No. As soon as a secondary cast member gets too much screen time on this show, it often means their demise is imminent. However, we still had our guards down when Denise got a starring role in Twice As Far. We'd watch her grow from a doctor who doubted herself into a strong-willed survivor who spoke up for what she wanted. So we were ecstatic to see her give a fantastic speech to Daryl and Rosita while they were out on a run. And I wanted you here because you're alone. Probably for the first time in your life. And because you're stronger than you think you are, which gives me hope that maybe I can be too. But Denise's speech was shockingly cut short when former savior Dwight assassinated her with one crossbow bolt. Unless you were in the writer's room or on set that day, it was impossible to see the sudden death of this developed character coming. I mean, I get that you'll just have to take my word for this, but she wasn't even the one I was aiming for. Number 7. Noah So you're in it for the long haul? Yeah. We absolutely loved watching Tyler James Williams play Noah. Although he had been through severe trauma, he was always likable and cared deeply about his friends. Noah was even willing to risk his life to get him and his friends out of a revolving door surrounded by walkers on all sides. Unfortunately, he was stuck inside of this cramped location with the cowardly Nicholas. When the fearful survivor failed to follow the plan, he created an opening that spelled Noah's doom. Oh my God. <laughs> We could only scream at our TVs as one of our favorite characters was suddenly removed from the story in one of the show's most brutal deaths. Nicholas definitely deserved to be decked by Glenn for suddenly sealing Noah's fate. Oh, we get him at the back. Where's Noah? Number 6. Shane Walsh So this is where you plan to do it. It's 
good a place as any. Fans love to imagine an alternate reality where longtime friends Rick and Shane could have worked together like real partners through the series. Unfortunately, their vastly different views of what it took to survive made them an incompatible team. After almost two seasons of tension, their conflict came to a head when Shane decided to end Rick. We were preparing for the series to follow the source material and have a third party intervene. Nothing has happened here. We're going to lay down our guns. We're going to walk back to the farm. Together. However, Rick actually managed to calm the situation down before attacking Shane with a knife. We were hugely surprised that Officer Friendly actually went through with this decisive act and took down one of his own. But we knew that Shane left Rick with no other choice but to take this extreme measure. Damn you for making me do this shit! This will see you, not me! Number 5. Beth Green. This is it. This is who you are and what this place is until the end. This place saved you. While we've long accepted that The Walking Dead isn't concerned with whether or not it hurts our feelings, this twist felt unnecessarily cruel. We spent half a season following the group's search for Beth. When she's finally reunited with her friends, a sinister leader named Don Lerner announces that the lovable Noah can't leave with the group. No, I just need Noah. And then you can leave. Although he agrees to this arrangement, Beth can't let this slide. She moves in to attack the cruel leader. A moment later, a gunshot ends Beth's life. Daryl immediately retaliates by eliminating Dawn before we've even gotten a chance to take a breath. We never thought the chances for a reunion we waited half a season for would disappear with the flash of a gun. It's over. It was just about her. Number four. Herschel Green. Nobody's gonna hurt you. I don't believe that. No family on this show has had more tragic deaths than the Greens. Before we lost Beth, we painfully parted with Herschel. This character was wise, a moral compass, and a constant source of hope for his friends. Herschel even managed to defy the odds and survive both a walker bite and leg amputation. After all he had been through, we had faith he'd survive being kidnapped by the despicable governor. When the villain threatened to end Herschel's life with a sword, Rick gave an inspiring plea for unity and forgiveness. We get to come back. I know. We all can change. But the governor swung the katana anyway. Watching the compassionate Herschel fall in this horrible twist made us feel like the Green family was doomed to suffer. Don't look back, Carl. Just keep walking. Number three, the Whisperer ambush victims. I've marked the border to the north. You'll see it as you leave. Alpha thought the best way to prove the Whisperers were not to be messed with was a horrifying show of force. During a joyful fair, she and her followers targeted a random selection of innocents and ripped them from their loved ones. After Alpha and her people took the lives of their captives, they publicly showed their gruesome work to the other survivors. Our hearts skipped a beat after each new deceased face was revealed. No! In one fell swoop, we lost Tara, Enid, Henry, and several other great characters. Since the lineup differed from the ones who died in the comics, there was no way to prepare for what we'd see. The startling sight of these undeserving victims sent a powerful and unforgettable message. And in the end, they, their time was cut short. And ours keeps going. Number two, Abraham Ford and Glenn Ree. I gotta pick somebody. Everybody's at the table waiting for me to order. Anyone who was familiar with the Walking Dead comics knew that Glenn was meant to perish at the end of Negan's Bat. So when the imposing villain had multiple heroes at his mercy, we had a strong idea of where the weapon would fall. But the show threw a tragic curveball by revealing that Abraham was Negan's first direct victim. Although his sudden death rattled us, we thought we'd been through the worst of it. And then Daryl punched Negan. The angry villain decided to prove a point by picking Glenn as his second victim. Oh, hell. I can see this is hard on you guys. This absolutely brutal turn of events managed to defy and confirm our expectations at once. 
Whether you were a hardcore fan or a new viewer, this brutal bat sequence caught you by surprise. People died, Rick. It's what happened. Doesn't mean the rest of them have to. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Carl Grimes Still is. It's gonna be. But nothing, nothing is gonna change that. There is no Walking Dead death that was more controversial and unexpected than the demise of Carl Grimes. Not only does he far outlive his father in the comics, but his survival seemed to be Rick's main motivation for all of his actions. Despite Carl's importance in both mediums, the writers revealed that he had been bitten in an absurdly shocking twist. The fact that he received this wound while completing a relatively standard survivor task also turned heads. Okay. Yeah. Although Carl's decline was handled well, a number of viewers refused to watch any more Walking Dead without him. While the show succeeded at creating the biggest shock of the series, this story turn came at a heavy cost in the real and fictional worlds. I'm sorry. I couldn't protect you. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.